Country is a place where you will make new friends. It's a place where you will always be loved and accepted. It's a place where you can be real. We don't expect you to just put on a happy face and pretend life is good. Exit 83 is loaded with people who care about you, and who God is shaping you to be, and we want to walk with you in that journey. This is a place for imperfect people, depending on a perfect God with a perfect plan for each of us. Together, we will discover the extravagant love of our Creator and His passion to have a relationship with us. Oh, and we're going to have a great time too. Welcome to Exit 83. Well, welcome to Exit 83. Thank you for being here today. Uh, people who are in sixth grade, you are in sixth grade not much longer. And you one, one day soon coming up, you are going to be part of Exit 83. And there's a bunch of videos that we have made for past and some for future trips. You saw some of the uh, Rock the Boat videos and Winter Camp videos and then some recap videos of things that we've done. And uh, we hope that this is a place that you can look at and you can feel at home, that you know that this is a safe place, that you know that this is a place where you are wanted. And we would love to get you plugged in in any way that we can. And we have all kinds of opportunities that we're going to talk about um, over the next little bit. And there will be opportunities for questions as we go along. So uh, please be ready for that as well. So uh, the first thing that I want to do as we get started is to let you know that I do not do this ministry alone. I do, I do not want to do it by myself, nor would I be able to do it by myself. And what we have for junior high and high school is a, a staff of adult volunteers. I'm going to ask them to come on up. Please come on up if you are part of the adult staff. These people are the people that are committed to, these are the people that are committed to these students every week uh, during junior high, for a junior high and high school group. These are the staff that are making connections with your students. These are the staff that our students know they can go to if they've got questions, if they've got stuff they're going through in life, if they are having an issue when they want to complain about you, parents. These are the staff that they come to. And so uh, this staff will eventually know some things about you that maybe you wish they didn't. But you know what? They still love you and they are, they are here for you as well. And so I wanted you to, to not only uh, see these people, but also make a connection with them. So I'm going to ask them to share, oh, where's the microphone? Oh, here it is. Um, to share their name and how long they've been on youth staff and whether it's junior high or high school staff. And then why they feel like this is something that is valuable and why they're here and, and what they enjoy about doing this. So I'm going to start right there with you. Okay, we're starting with me. So my name is Austin Karpinski. I've been on junior high staff for like four or five years now, to be exact. Um, uh, something I find really valuable about being in the position I'm in is that uh, I spend a lot of time up there in that area and being able to see um, students of varying ages uh, react to music and just other ways, forms of worship uh, is just, it's incredible. I can't quite quantify it with words, um, but it's um, seeing your children, your, just all these students interacting together in this way is so powerful. Yeah. Okay, my name is Ryan Godoy. I have been volunteering on junior high staff for eight years now. And um, I got involved in church as a junior high. I started going to church at this church and, you know, hanging out with all the students, hanging out with the volunteers. It really got me plugged in, really got me connected. And I'm still here today. I'm still walking with the Lord and things are going great. And I hope that I can help some more students just, you know, love LBF and love God and just keep on walking with them for the rest of their life. I'm Kathy Godoy. I'm on junior high staff, and I've been here about four years. Um, and one of the biggest things I've seen 
is just being able to connect with students and being able to pray with them throughout the week. I have students that I text every week and I talk to them and see how their week's going, what's going on in school, what sports they're doing, and just being able to connect and actually know what's going on in their lives as opposed to just seeing them once a week um, has been really powerful for me at least. I'm <clears throat> dying. <laughs> Sorry, I'm uh, Tim Longo, and I have I'm the new guy. I've been on staff I think eight or nine months now, um, and the reason I love working with the staff with the youth is as you get as old as I am, you find that that adults can kind of dismiss what's going on in the youth's lives, and. Um, it's fun to not do that. It's fun to get to know them and talk with them and see what's going on and pray with them. And uh, just watching the kids be honest and real with us is a great time. Hi, I'm Tori Whalen, and I came on probably about the same time as you. There was a calling for some help, and God said, okay, raise your hand. And so I said, okay, let's go. So my kids are all grown, but it's just really neat to get back in to this age group again. And... Um, just really see where they're at and what I can do to encourage and be a part of this great group that we have up here to uh, help these kids grow. So, there you go. Thanks. I'm Ruth Karpinski. Um, I've been on high school staff for about three years now, probably a little over three years. And um, my two sons, Austin and Benjamin, have um, come up through the youth ministry here, and it has absolutely blessed our family. They have been wrapped up, enveloped in, um, with just love and support, and um, so I wanted to be part of that for other uh, youth, because I feel like um, in the world that we live in today, that is just crucial. It's for them to have a safe place to fall and land, and I am just privileged to be able to be one of many great folks um, here with your kiddos, and we're excited about the year ahead. Hi, I'm Sam Dukes, and I'm on junior high staff. I've been a part of it for, I think, almost four years, and um, for me personally, my junior high leader when I was a student, um, she had a really huge impact on my life, and she was a really big part of me growing and learning and who I am today. So I love that I get to be on the other side of that now, and I love growing and learning with these kids. Hi, my name is Rachel Quinn. I've been on staff for two years, and something I like about this ministry is um, being on staff, I've been able to see the students' journey in their faith, and it really has been inspiring, just their love for Jesus and their wanting to grow, and so it's inspired me <clears throat> in my faith and my willingness to serve them as well. Hi, I'm Carolyn McNett. Um, I've been here at LBF for my entire life, and I grew up in this youth group. Um, I actually, years ago, probably 12 years ago, served here in the youth ministry. I'm just doing some worship stuff. Worship's always been kind of my main area of service. Um, but I've been about a year and a half down here, and God just started kind of knocking at the door, saying, I want you down there. And I kicked and screamed and said, no, no, no. And this one dragged me with him. And um, I spent a lot of time just on my own mentoring, like, college-age girls. And I just feel like sharing my experience with them is so invaluable to their development and just understanding the world. And so it's just a real treat to have that time with the high school girls down here. So, I'm Ron McNutt, and I've been uh, with the high school staff a couple years, I think. Um, I don't know. I, I, you know, I felt... God calling me to to share my experience with these kids. I've got somewhat of a colorful background and upbringing, and um, you know the thing is, God is good all the time, and and He's brought me through some things to where I know that He's going to allow me to share that with some of these students. You know, God willing, um, I I get opportunities to um, help them grow in their faith and uh, and and to see. God in that and to see how good he is and uh, in any troubles that they may or may not have, you know, I can hopefully walk with them through some of that stuff too. So that's it. Yeah. These are incredible people and I trust them completely. 
and uh, the relationship that they're able to have with students, um, we see the fruit of that every, every week where uh, just in conversations, we, we love to get together. We meet before each time at youth group and we talk about what God's doing and just the testimonies of how alive and active God is in the lives of teenagers is undeniable. And so I am really thankful for each of these people, and I am really looking forward to uh, your students getting to know them as well. Thank you guys so much. Oh, thank you. And my name is Jeff Taylor. For those of you who don't know, I have uh, been here since 2003 on staff. Uh, I was hired as the youth pastor, and then I went into being one of the teaching pastors, and then the worship pastor, and now I'm back doing student ministry, and this is exactly where I belong. This is exactly what um, I should be doing, and I love it. Uh, it never gets old, and I, I really appreciate all the opportunities that I have and the relationships I get to have with young people. It's, it's my passion, and I really am blessed to be able to be here and have the opportunities that I have. And I am the one, uh, you, there are all kinds of ways to get a hold of me, and my information is kind of everywhere. It's on the website, and it's on packets and things like that. But um, I love to get the opportunity to sit with parents and to talk with parents about questions they have or issues you're having or uh, events. And, and I, if you're willing to be put on a list, I'll put you on a list to drive us to Magic Mountain or to drive students places and we need volunteers kind of all the time and that kind of a thing. And so there are going to be all kinds of opportunities for that. And today my desire is to give you some of the logistical things like this is how the youth ministry works. And these are some of the things that we do. But I also want to give you an understanding of who we are as a ministry and for you to know what's our goal. What's the reason you want them to come to youth group? What's the reason you want them involved um, on Sundays and Wednesdays? What, what is your end goal? And here it is. The church mission statement, LBF as a whole, is we exist to passionately pursue life in Jesus and to lead our neighbors to do the same. If what we're doing doesn't fall into that category, we won't do it. And so in each of our events, there's a purpose. In each of our fun things and the games that we play, there is a reason behind it, whether it's relationship building or outreach or Bible study, whatever it is, we have a purpose behind what we do because we want to passionately pursue life in Jesus. Keep your religion. The religion stuff, there's no life in it. It is that passionate pursuit of Jesus that brings our souls to life and we get to interact with the living God. And uh, who wants to pass that up? And so that is our pursuit and what we want to do. And here at Exit 83, the way we do that um, there are three things. One, we want students to know, every student who walks through the door, whether it's the ones who are plugged in and have been going to the church since, you know, children's ministry, or the friends that they bring from school who have never been in church before in their life, we want every student who walks through the door to know that God has a purpose and a plan for your life right now. He's not waiting for you to grow up He's not waiting for you to get married or to have a career, to get your act together. He has a plan for your life right now, and he wants to move in your life and use you right now. Second thing, we want you to know that this is a safe place where you can be real, where you can come in and be like, oh, I'm so frustrated with life, and that nobody's going to be like, oh, well, that's not very Christian. We want you to be real, and we want to walk with you through the good stuff and through the bad stuff. We want to celebrate the victories, and we want to cry with you when there's pain. And we want you to know that this is a place where that can happen. And parents, you should know that this is a place where that can happen. And while we will never promise to keep a secret from you, we want the students to be real here. And we hope that there will be an understanding and a trust that we care for them, and that any time you need to know something, you will know and that you can trust that in us and, and, and count on that. And the third thing is, we want every person who walks through the door to know that we're glad you're here. We, we wanna celebrate that you're here, that you can be part of our family, and uh, that friends that you bring can be part of our family. I'm telling the youth group every week, this must not be our little club where we get together and we like high five and we do the little secret handshake. There's no secret little handshake. But where we, we're together and we never look out 
and we never bring people in and, and we never want to be exclusive. And so um, we want everyone who walks through the door to know that we are glad that you're here. And we do that through a variety of ways um, that we're going to talk some about today. And so this is why we exist. This is what we're going to be doing. And everything that we do, whether it's on a Wednesday night or on, uh, at a summer camp or whatever it may be, is for this purpose because we are committed to passionately pursuing life in Jesus and leading others to do the same. So that is who we are and what we're doing. And on your table um, are a few things that um, are uh, some of the things that we're about and what we're going to be doing. And I'm going to walk through some of this. But uh, the first thing I wanted to take you through is our weekly programs. These are the things that uh, students look forward to every week, and there's a couple different opportunities. The first is on Sundays. We meet in here at 9.15 uh, during the 9.15 service. It is the same length as the 9.15 service. We don't start later or end later or earlier. It's just right within that. So students can come in on Sunday morning. Back on the wall, you will see a laptop computer and an iPad. At this point, our other iPad died, but uh, an iPad. Students who this is their first time to the church will sign, uh, fill out the form on the, I, on the uh, computer just one time. Once they have filled out that form, from then on, all they have to do is put their phone number in the iPad and it checks them in. We ask students to check in, one, so they have an alibi in case they get blamed for something. It's like, no, no, they were here. We also uh, use our database to communicate with students about upcoming events. Uh, we want to invite certain students, like say, let's say the eighth grade girls are gonna do something fun. Uh, we'll send out emails or text messages to the, those girls. And so the database is really important. If you have been part of 56 Degrees, you will get automatically bumped into and added to our Exit 83 database. So if you've been here and been checking in for 56 degrees, you won't have to do the computer. You will be able to come up and just put your phone number in the iPad and you're gonna be good to go. Of course, if there's any issues with that, it doesn't work for you or whatever, let one of the staff know and um, we can fix it or we'll cry and get it fixed for you. So um, 9.15 uh, in here, we meet together junior high and high school. On Sundays, we go through the same series that they're going through up in the main services. And so you will have something to talk with your student about uh, after church because we will be in the same series. And what's fun about this is Dan Franklin and I think very differently and we have different audiences. And so you are going to get from your student and students, you're gonna get from your parents very different perspectives of the same passage, the same theme, the same topics, um, which is really cool. I hear from students and parents a lot just how I was like, oh, I had a really good conversation with my son after church. You know, I, you know that, that was a good point that you made. You know, I kind of wish Dan Franklin would have made that point of that. You know, but it's things like that. <laughs> so we, um, we do that on Sunday mornings. Uh, right now, you, you are sitting at tables. We had these tables set up this morning for the students, and all the students sit around, junior high and high school, sit around together because we want the opportunity for students to relate with one another. I don't want to stand up here and just lecture them all the time and tell them what they should think. I want them talking about what we're talking about and looking up verses in the Bible. And so a lot of times we'll have these tables out. Sometimes we do the rows and, and that's fine too, but uh, we do interactive it, stuff down here is very interactive and I want the students involved. I don't want them going through junior high and high school, just kind of nodding their head in agreement with whatever I say, but they never really think about it themselves. And so I challenge them and sometimes they go, well, I don't know what to think. Okay, good. Let's talk about that. And so we do the service down here a few different ways. And then um, on May 29th is Promotion Sunday. All the Sunday school classes on campus are going to move up on May 29th. So May 29th will be the first time that that you seventh graders are going to come in here, you'll check in on the iPad, and you will be part of Exit 83. Just to give you a heads up, the week before that, you will um, still go to 56 degrees, but all the sixth graders with one of the leaders from 56 degrees will bring them up and they'll get kind of a preview week the week before, but their teacher will stay with them. And so um, that will be kind of a preview week. And then the next week, don't go to, on May 29th, don't go to 56 degrees. Just come right in here, sign in, 
and welcome to Exit 83. So that will be when we start that. Um, then we have midweek. And we are really excited around here about midweek because there is some restructuring going on that is going to take place on June 1st, which I'm going to talk about in, in just a second. But for what you need to know, by the time you get into uh, Exit 83, our midweek meets on uh, Wednesdays from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock every Wednesday night from seven o'clock to nine o'clock. This is a change from the way things have been. Historically, we have had two separate ministries. Tuesday night was junior high, seventh and eighth grade, and Wednesday was high school, uh, ninth through 12th grade. That meant that we had separate staff, we had separate volunteers, we had separate budgets, we had separate events, we did everything distinctly junior high or high school. Um, but then kind of looking around that that was the only thing we were doing separate. We do Sunday mornings together. We do rock the boat together. We do 30 hour famine together. We do beach trips together and magic mountain trips together and outreach with the Thanksgiving serve together. Our, our ministry really is a unified ministry where we do all these things together. Sunday morning, students come in, they sit down at tables. Nobody's asking anybody what grade they're in or, or like, oh, well, this is a junior high table. They are mixing. This, our group is very unified, um, which is a really special thing. And as we were praying about this really over the last year or so and considering um, the best way to do this and the most unifying way, we really began to question, why are we keeping midweek separate? Why are we spreading out our resources? Why are we spreading out our volunteers and, and time and events when our group is used to being together? And so uh, we decided that as of June 1st, we are going to combine the junior high and high school midweek. And it's going to be on Wednesdays from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock, which I know is a day change for our junior high students. But for you new students, this will be all you'll ever know. And so this is going to be um, nothing for you to even get used to other than just being in a new group. But that is going to start on June 1st, and we're going to be in here. And um, this is going to be... Uh, an opportunity for us to be together, but there will still be distinctly junior high and high school opportunities. Here's an example of a way that uh, we will structure Wednesday nights. Junior high and high school will be together. They'll come in together. They'll mingle together. We, we, we often do a game or some sort of fun icebreaker or mixer activity. We'll do a game. We do announcements. We do worship all together. We will be one big group all together doing those things. Then there will always be a teaching from the Bible. We, we, taught, we do topics, we do books of the Bible, all kinds of different things. And the teaching is where we could do it a couple of different ways. One, either we stay together as a big group and do the teaching, or one, the junior hires stay in for a teaching, and the high schoolers go out to detour groups, which I'm going to talk about in just a second, and then after like 35 minutes, they switch. High school comes in for a teaching, junior high goes out to their detour groups. The detour groups are the key. And the detour groups are, are our big secret weapon. Because we recognize that even in a group with 30 people, you can hide, you can get lost, you can feel ignored. And so our desire is that this is a place where you can connect. The detour groups is where we do that. And the detour groups, we don't do it on Sunday. We only do it on Wednesdays. Um, the detour groups are small groups. And the detour groups will be seventh grade girls, seventh grade boys, eighth grade girls, eighth grade boys, ninth grade girls, ninth grade boys, all the way up. And so the detour groups will be separate. That will be where they will just be with junior hires because the detour groups are where we're going to talk about life. And we're going to uh, be praying for one another and be asking for prayer. And those are times where it is appropriate for high schoolers to be with high schoolers and junior hires to be with junior hires. And so our detour groups are where you're really going to get connected. All the leaders that you saw up here are the leaders for detour groups. And so uh, students will each be placed into a detour group. And Ryan will be your seventh grade boys detour group leader. And Kathy will be your seventh grade girls detour group leader. And um, 
those are the opportunities that you'll have to really connect with your leader as well as seven or eight other students that are your gender and your grade. And so even though we are combining as one group, we still see the importance of having those opportunities with your same aged peers and getting to connect that way. There will also be opportunities to do junior high specific and high school specific events. And so there may be some things like, hey, this is just for the junior hires, ha ha, high schoolers, you don't get to do it. And we're gonna go go-karting or we're going to go play paintball or do something. Um, and so this is the way that Wednesday night is going to be structured. And so, like I said, part of it will be together and then part of it each week will be breaking out into our detour groups uh, for, and the detour groups may be prayer times together where we're talking about life and asking for prayer, or it will be a follow-up to whatever we talked about in the message. And there'll be small group questions and they'll be processing that in, uh, in a different way with their small groups. So on your table, um, I don't know if there's enough for every, everyone at the table, but there's more on the back shelf. On your table is a uh, paper that looks like this. This is a letter that I wrote to you, primarily parents, so that you can understand better what I just talked about, uh, this restructure. On the back are possibly some questions that you have, like, is it wise to have such a large age range together? Okay, you've got seventh graders and seniors together. And I want to speak to that uh, specifically really quick, um, just so you hear it from my mouth and the passion and belief that I have behind it. Um, it is a big difference to have an 11-year-old to an 18-year-old, and we recognize that, which is why we have so many staff to be sure that each demographic of student is cared for and that it's not just walking into a big room with a lot of big people who, I don't know, I hear the stories and they're gonna throw me in a trash can and they're gonna, you know. And I want you to know that in our experience of, of decades of doing this, that we have never had a negative experience having our junior hires with our high schoolers in terms of problems or bullying or uh, people feeling excluded from things um, f because we have junior hires and high schoolers together. The element, that I, the element of this that I wanna encourage you to remember is we're already doing this together. It's, it, this is not going to be a new experience for our students other than junior hire, current junior hires moving to Wednesday night. Our group is used to being together. And so there um, is accountability. We have lots of supervision. Uh, we've never had an issue with um, youngers being with olders. Um, in fact, one of the things that I was really encouraged by when we were talking about restructuring the youth ministry to one night um, I met with a group of our high school leadership uh, students and I just wanted to float the idea out there. I'm like, we're not doing this yet, but just, what would you think about this? And without exception, every one of them felt like this is exactly what we need to do. And they started to bring up suggestions like, hey, so would, would it be possible, like we've already been in junior high. And so like, are there gonna be opportunities for us to like have a junior high buddy and like, be an encouragement to them and support them and, and that maybe they could come to us if they have questions and things like that. And I was like, that is exactly the kind of heart that we're hoping for. You know, there are a lot of students here in this ministry who really care about people and who are going to really care about you guys in seventh grade coming up. And they're going to care about you. They're going to take care of you. And um, I really believe that this is going to be a positive, uh, life-giving thing that's going to happen in our ministry. And I'm really excited about doing that. So um, I know I've just talked for like 25 minutes straight. So um, up to this point, when it comes to like our purpose statement and what we're doing or this, uh, our weekend program or our midweek program, are there any questions that have come to mind based on things that I've said or not said. Yeah. Maybe the continuity or relationship between the Sunday morning and the midweek. Is yeah. Like mm -hmm. heavily recommended that they're in both or, or what's the, is there a correlation in those or do they stand alone well or? Yeah, good question. Um, our Sunday morning 
uh, is, does not have the kind of staff-student interaction that Wednesdays does. Um, and the teaching series are completely independent. And so it's not like if you missed Wednesday, you're going to be lost on Sunday or Sunday to Wednesday. We have, um, there are some people where Wednesday just doesn't work. They, they've got other things that they can't get out of or, or rearrange. And so they're not able to come midweek, but they come on Sunday and they're here every Sunday and it's great. Um, there is not, there are not detour groups on Sundays. And so there isn't that element of connection, but that's one of the reasons we try and do the tables so that they can connect with one another and relate to one another. Um, but one of the things that they are lacking on Sundays is the staff interaction. Um, their detour group leader and things like that are not here. And I'll just let you know why, the, the reasoning behind that a little bit, um, is that it is my number one priority that the staff that is feeding your students gets fed themselves. And I don't want it to be a deal breaker for them to have to choose, you know what, they can't stay all day for church, for multiple services of church. And so I want to give them the freedom and the ability to go up and be fed and to worship without having to do the ministry. I want them to be able to receive ministry. And so Sunday mornings is not a requirement for our volunteer staff. And yet, a lot of times, you'll see them down here. You'll, you'll, they'll be like, oh yeah, I'm going to come down here this week. You know, Dan's Oh no, it's, no I'm gonna, just kidding. Um, so there, there is that element that is, is missing um, on a Sunday from Wednesday. Any others? Okay. All right. Um, upcoming events. On your table are some calendars. These calendars are available on the back shelf. The, these events are on the church calendar. And um, I would encourage you to put these in your phone and wherever else you need to because uh, we always tell students, you know what, you may not care about these calendars, but your parents who have to get you here care about these calendars. And so please take one of these calendars and put these dates in just to run through a couple of these things really quick of some things that are coming out. Rookie night is June 1st. That's our first night together. That's your first midweek. So you will have come to church on the 29th. As part of Exit 83, June 1st is your first Wednesday night, and we are going to party. I mean, it's going to be incredible. Do not miss this. Bring all your friends, and it will change your life. It's going to be awesome. It's our rookie night where we welcome all the rookies, all the incoming seventh graders, and acknowledge all the incoming ninth graders who are rookies into high school. We also celebrate the graduating seniors. And so when I say we're gonna party, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're gonna do games. We've got videos. We're going to have tons of food and candy. It's gonna be super interactive and you're gonna have a great time. So June 1st is rookie night. Don't miss it. Um, it's gonna be big, it's gonna be loud, and yet, there's going to be people here who are going to care for you, and uh, we would love to see you there. And uh, it's, it's a great way to launch into this group. Rock the Boat is June 12th to the 17th. On your table are these, uh, are these packets. Uh, they are also back on the shelf. These packets, there's nothing to turn in in these packets. These just tell you about Rock the Boat and tell you how to register for Rock the Boat. All the registration and payment is all online. And so it's super easy, um, and this packet will tell you all about it. To give you a few details about Rock the Boat, this was something we did in 2007 and 2008 as a high school-only camp. And uh, in 2009, I was out of youth ministry, and so it stopped. Last year, uh, or no, in 2014, I came in in May, and it was so it was too late. We already had summer camp plans, but the next year, last year in 2015, we uh, went back to rock the boat. And what it is, is Three Rivers is a little town outside Visalia, which if you just drove there, it's about three and a half hours. It takes us about five and a half hours because junior high and high school bladders apparently are smaller or something. But uh, we stop for lunch and we, we, we caravan up there together. Um, we go up there and there's a lake up there called Lake Kawea. It is a small, it's actually not a lake. It's a water reservation place. It's, there's a dam. And so water flows out of the mountains and um, it's a big area. And we go up there and we stay at Kawea Park Resort. 
and it is a really nice camping facility. We all stay in tents, and uh, we have campfires, and we have a dining hall where we cook all the food, and uh, we eat together, and it's, it's fantastic. There are showers, there's a swimming pool, we play games, we have outdoor rec, it's, it's awesome, it's so much fun. And then each day, each morning, we get up, and we have small groups together. We do detour groups up there at camp. And then we pack everything up. We head down to the lake, which is about seven minutes down the road. We launch the boats and the canoes and we inflate all the inflatable trampolines and, and all that kind of stuff. And we hang out on the beach until about four o'clock in the afternoon. At that point, we head back up to camp. Everybody takes a shower. They go swimming, hang out until dinner. We do dinner. And then after dinner, we gather together for a large group time. And we have a theme for uh, the camp each year. Last year, it was wakes. What are you leaving behind? And so we talked about the impact that we are having on other people and the impact that other people are having on us. And so that was a theme through the week. And then we have s'mores. We eat snacks, and then we all go to bed and we wake up the next day and do it all over again. It is so much fun. And to let you know, maybe you're in a place where you're like, I, have, I am not a water sports enthusiast. I would rather not have to wakeboard or tube or anything. You don't have to. No one's going to force you to. You are welcome to come and ride in the boats and just cruise around and ride. Uh, we have 10 canoes. We have a trailer of 10 canoes that we go up. You can go cruise around in the canoes. You can lounge on all the inflatable loungy things. You can jump. We have a giant inflatable trampoline out on the water, and you can jump in that. It's, it's really a lot of fun. And so um, if you're not like a wakeboarder or want to learn how to wakeboard, don't let that be a deal breaker for you. If you do want to, if you do want to wakeboard, but you're like, I don't know how, we have lots of people that are going to be up there that know how to wakeboard, that know how to teach wakeboarding. And so we will teach you. And let me just tell you the years that I've done this, um, it is one of the most encouraging times that we have as a group. When somebody's trying to learn how to wakeboard, huge encouragement opportunities. And so we have people, I mean, whole boats, you can hear them across the lake cheering as they're going by, and like, you know, and the person's like, and then they fall and everybody cheers and it's really a great time. And let me just say that camp, if you're looking to get connected to the group, camp is a key way to do it. When you spend five days sleeping in a tent with somebody, you will be friends. You just will be. You will know whose feet stink and you will know who won't stop talking so you can go to sleep. You'll know who snores. It's awesome. It's really great. And so um, I would encourage you to uh, take one of those packets, read through it. If you have any questions, get a hold of me. Um, you need to be registered. Um, and to register, you need a $125 deposit. You need to be registered by May 15th because we need to be able to start buying food and organizing tents and, and all of that kind of a thing. So May 15th is a key date to have your deposit in by and registration. The rest of it is due on June 5th. We'll have a camp meeting where we're gonna talk about all the other details about camp and your final payment is due by June 5th, okay? Any questions about Rock the Boat? Because I know this is a big one. June 5th was just the end of the payment or that's the date of the meeting as well? It's the day of the meeting as well. So yeah, be, it, your payment is due and it's all online so you can pay anytime you want. You can pay it all at once if you want to. Um, but June 5th is the meeting right after church just like this. Oh, it says right there. <laughs> is the meeting mandatory? Is the meeting mandatory? It is hopefully mandatory. It is like hey, really be here because you're going to get a lot of really good information and things that you need to know. But if there is something where you're like, I absolutely can't be there, it's not a deal breaker for you to go to camp. <laughs> and just so you know, I know that with water and boats and things, there might be someone like, oh my gosh, that could potentially be really dangerous. Um, just to let you know, we, we do follow the laws. And you know, like anybody under 13 that's on a water jacket, you have to wear a life jacket. And we've got the life jackets. And we've, um, we are always very safe uh, with what we're doing. We're not letting students drive boats. We're not uh, you know, letting them jump over the fire pit, um, at least again, and that kind of a thing. So uh, we, we do care about all of that as well. Any other questions about that? Okay. Um, 
So as seventh graders, you have another really great opportunity, VBS, which maybe as a kid you enjoyed for years going up through Life Kids, and you're like, oh, that was fun. Now you get to be a leader. We have the opportunity July 11th to the 15th is our VBS at the church, and we cancel youth group midweek that week so uh, that people can volunteer. And we ask them to volunteer Monday through Friday. And you get to be junior leaders uh, for the VBS. And it is awesome. It's so much fun. And you get a great opportunity to lead and to help younger uh, students out. And they have a great week. And so uh, VBS is another big program that we ask students to get involved with. And a youth group is canceled on that Wednesday, which would be like the 13th, if I'm doing my math correctly. Um, it is also one of the things where one of the important things about X83 is we want our students to learn to serve. And so we serve with the Thanksgiving serve down at the Gap. We do 30-hour famine, which you see up here on the list, which is where we go without food for 30 hours. And then we do service projects with a variety of nonprofit um, organizations and uh, because we are called biblically to serve to serve one another and to care for the least of these. And so uh, serving is part of that. And so VBS would be one opportunity where we get to serve our church. We get to serve the kids in our church. And so we encourage them to do that. Other events throughout the year, Youth Sunday, uh, it's the August 21st. It's the third Sunday in August. Uh, they turn the, all the services over there over to us. And so we do the music, we do the announcements, we do the message, uh, we serve communion, and that's another opportunity for students to serve. Uh, in September, we go to the Hallelujah Jubilee at Magic Mountain, and so you, there will be announcements and signups for that. Uh, we do the Thanksgiving serve in November. We do winter camp. Uh, winter camp this year will again be separate. It will be an individual, um, so it'll be junior high winter camp, and that is typically at Forest Home in January. And so um, you'll get dates and packets and everything for that as well. And then we also do 30 hour famine, uh, which is the end of February, which is a fundraiser. We raise money to then donate to World Vision, and then um, we do service projects, and it's an overnighter. And so we spend the night here at the church and we have all kinds of events and things like that. And it's, it's really cool. So um, any questions about any of this? Austin fell down. <laughs> okay. Um, so that is a quick, breathless overview of what we do here. And uh, again, if you have questions or you want to talk, please get a hold of me. You can call me here at the church. You can email me. I will get back to you and uh, would love to answer any questions that you have. And uh, again, you will, uh, we try and communicate as best we can in a variety of forms. We've got the My Life Online um, database where you can go on calendars. We print calendars. We print packets. We try and have it f available to you in a variety of ways so that you can get it. That back uh, information area back there is always back there and these things are on there. So on Sunday morning, if you wonder whether your student didn't bring you something, uh, you can come down and just take one off the shelf and uh, that will keep you posted as well. So, any final questions? You good? All right, let me pray for us and we will wrap this up. And uh, so good to see all of you and all you sixth graders. I am so looking forward to you being here. It's going to be so much fun. We're going to have a great time. So God, we want everything that we do to be fully committed to you. We don't want to do any of this under our own power. We don't want to um, hold back. Um, we want to be in deep relationship with you and with other people. And God, right now, I want to pray for all the students in the room where this is a big change. Uh, m moving up into seventh grade, uh, whether it's at school or here at church, God, it's just a big move. And I pray that you would bring peace to their heart, that you would communicate to them your purpose for them, and God, that they would know in their heart that this is a place where they're going to have a great time, where they're going to be loved, where they can be real, and God, that this would just be a very special time in their life as they join Exodus 83. And so I pray that you would be with each of us God, with the parents who are learning to let go and, and seeing their kids grow up 
and just what a blessing this can be. And so we offer all of this to you and pray that you'd be at the center of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please feel free to take anything that's on the table. If you ran out on the table, there's more on the back shelves. Thank you for being here today.